Welcome to The Fitterist Show, with your host, Christopher Allen, where we explore the art of mind and body conditioning. Hello, and welcome to today's show, where we're going to take a look at the recent huge market success of the Beyond Meat IPO and the introduction of their meatless burger product. And we're going to take a look at the reasons for the skyrocketing IPO of this company, as well as a deeper dive into the nutritional value of the meatless patty, the taste of the product, and the cost and value of the Beyond Meat product. And answer questions like, how does Beyond Meat compare to a traditional ground beef patty? Is Beyond Meat the future of protein in a world with increasing global population? So let's start with their IPO on Thursday, May 2nd, the date of the IPO Beyond Meat made global headlines for climbing over 163%. They had an IPO range around $19 to $21. That was oversubscribed. I think the first trade was around $42. And by the end of the day, it had popped to almost $66 above its uh, IPO range of $19 to $21. So Beyond Meat was essentially the best performing IPO in the United States in almost two decades. And as of this recording, Beyond Meat is trading just around $80. So huge financial marketplace success story. And there's some huge investors in this company, uh, Kleiner Perkins, Caulfield Buyers, Bill Gates, Tyson Foods, the Humane Society. There's some big names behind the company. And what Beyond Meat does is it develops and manufactures a variety of plant protein-based food products. So they are very focused at plant and the vegetarian meat substitutes that are made from usually mixtures of pea protein isolates. They also include things like um, coconut oil and other ingredients that we'll discuss uh, shortly. And the way they kind of phrase it is they essentially say that they are bypassing the animal in the process of creating a vegetarian meat product. So the global meat market is over a trillion dollar opportunity. So Beyond Meat is eyeing an increasing share of that unbelievably massive market. And as you might imagine, there's a lot of other companies competing that are interested in a trillion dollar marketplace, including companies like Boca Foods, Field Roast Green Meat Company, Impossible Foods, Light Life, Morningstar Farms, Tofurky. And there's also traditional meat companies that are entering this space, expanding. So you've got the huge behemoths like Cargill, Hormel Foods, JBS, Tyson Foods, and companies of that nature. So there's some huge companies with a vested interest in maintaining or growing their share of this trillion dollar meat market globally. And obviously the financial markets have been quite bullish on Beyond Meats, even though the company to date remains unprofitable at present, but they are as they say, on a path to profitability. In addition, if you look at the Beyond Meat corporate literature, they also state in their company charter they're attempting to help resolve a number of growing issues attributed to livestock production, including human health, climate change, constraints on natural resources, and overall animal welfare. So let's take a look at the cost. Beyond Meat is about $12 a pound, so it's not inexpensive. It's certainly not cheaper than ground beef. Just for some comparisons, I looked up Walmart has an 8515 ground beef that it's around 450 a pound. And the national average for lean ground beef is around $5.19 per pound. So Beyond Meat is around twice as expensive as lean ground beef that's available at supermarkets. So from a cost perspective, there's certainly a premium that one pays for the Beyond Meat product. Next, I'm going to take a look at the nutritional value. So there's lots and lots of articles outside of those that are focused on the IPO and the financial success of the company. Articles that focus on the look, feel, taste, texture of the Beyond Meat burger. And I get it. They're trying to replace traditional burgers. So all of those things are important. But let's first take a look at the nutritional value of the Beyond Meat Burger and compare it to a traditional burger patty. So when you look at the ingredient list, there are 21 different ingredients for the Beyond Meat Burger. I'm gonna run through these pretty quickly. Uh, Again, I'm not a dietitian, I am not a nutritionist, but I did wanna go through, and I did take the time to do a little bit of research on 
the ingredients that are in the Beyond Meat burger product. So pea protein isolate, this is where it gets its source of, of protein. Pressed canola oil, this is extracted from rapeseed and it adds fat and texture to the product. Similarly, coconut oil is also used for fat and texture. It is processed and refined coconut oil, so this is important. Water, moisture, everybody knows that one. Yeast extract, so this is a hydrolyzed yeast that is used really to enhance flavor. Maltodextrin, which is a powder that's derived from either corn, potato, or wheat that is used as a thickener or filler to help with the texture. There are a, a number of natural flavors in the product, which means there could be things like essential oils, distillates, any product or a constituent derived from kind of a spice, fruit juice that helps with flavoring specifically. So it's much more, more around flavoring than it is of direct nutritional value. Gum Arabic which is a carbohydrate that's used for fiber and also to add some texture. Sunflower oil, it's used for texture and also as a preservative. Salt, big, big flavor enhancer, as you might guess, and also as a preservative. Succinic acid, which has a little bit of an acid taste, which is used as in food as a buffer and a neutralizing agent. Acetic acid, which is an ethanol product that's used as a vinegar-type flavoring for products. Non-GMO modified food starch. This is usually derived from corn-based product and used as a stabilizer around texture and consistency of the product. Cellulose from bamboo, which is obtained by bleaching and chemically treating the bamboo, which is used in the product as a stabilizer for texture. Methyl cellulose, again, derived from a plant-based product, but used to add a little more texture and bulk to the product. Potato starch uses a binder. Beet juice extract, this is used primarily for color. So this is obviously derived from beets and used as a food color. And this gives you when you actually cook the patty, when, when we'll talk about this in a minute, it gives that a little bit of the juiciness to the patty, which is actually beet juice extract. Ascorbic acid to maintain, this really around is maintaining color. It's used as a preservative. Annatto extract, again, used for color. Citrus fruit extract used as a preservative. Vegetable glycerin, this is also made from vegetable oils during production of soap or biodiesel. It's used as a thickener and or a wetting agent. So there's a lot of different products, 21 different ingredients in the Beyond Meat patty. And the concern here is that most of the ingredients are still highly processed and chemically treated ingredients. And there's some unknowns around how the body handles the processing of different chemically produced ingredients and the top five ingredients, I think, are mostly refined and processed. And it's difficult when you compare those 21 ingredients to lean ground beef ingredients of one ingredient, which is beef. So I put together a little comparison, nutritional comparison chart of the Beyond Meat Burger product with 85% lean ground beef and a 90-10 lean ground beef, all similar four ounce sample sizes. And just to compare the nutritional value across calories, total fat, saturated fat, cholesterol, sodium, protein, iron, and then I also put the cost in the chart too. So you can access and see a copy of this comparison chart at www.fitterist.com slash 008. But the summary of the chart is that lean ground beef, and I use the Costco 9010 lean ground beef as the primary comparison. The lean ground beef has about 40% fewer calories. It has about half the total fat and about 25% lower saturated fat than the Beyond Meat product. In addition, the lean ground beef has about one fifth of the sodium content now, the Beyond Meat patty has no cholesterol and has a little bit higher iron content than the lean ground beef. But remember, the Beyond Meat product is more than two times more expensive than lean ground beef. So when you look at a pure nutritional comparison of the Beyond Meat burger, and this is, again, just the meat or meat product comparison. So no buns, no condiments, 
no cheese, just the burger patty itself. It's pretty hard to come away with any other conclusion than the lean ground beef, even 85-15 lean ground beef, is not better for you from a health and nutrition perspective than the Beyond Meat Burger. So let's move on to taste. When I was cooking the patty, I thought it was pretty similar to the ground beef patty. I mean, there's a slight color variation, but the addition of the coconut oil and the canola oil and the beet juice extract really provided that kind of burger bleed in the skillet, and it was very similar to a hamburger patty. But while the visual appeal of the Beyond Meat patty was a little different, from a taste perspective and my unrefined taste buds, I thought it actually tasted pretty good. Clearly, the salt and the added fat from some of the processed oils helped with that flavor. And to be honest, I'm not sure if I would be able to tell if somebody substituted a Beyond Meat patty in a burger if I ordered it out at a restaurant, particularly if it was included with condiments and lettuce, tomato, bun. So overall, I'd certainly give the taste a passing grade. Although if you ask me, I prefer the taste of an all beef patty. So from a value perspective, again, summarizing the nutritional value of the lean ground beef with fewer calories, half of the total fat, that's, that's non-trivial and 25% lower saturated fat than the Beyond Meat product. Again, with lower sodium, I think when you look at the nutritional value and then couple that with the cost, that lean ground beef costs less than half of Beyond Meat, makes lean ground beef the clear winner for both consumers and consumer health. The analogy here might be And I'll use another disruptive company like Tesla. It's like a Tesla that costs $100,000 for the car, goes from 0 to 60 in 10.6 seconds, and has a slightly worse safety record profile. It's attractive and sleek and elegant, but it doesn't really offer any more value than a regular car. So I would say the same analogy to the Beyond Meat. It's interesting. It's a sexy. The media loves the story. But from a nutritional value, I think lean ground beef is a clear winner. So summarizing, look, massive, massive money invested in Beyond Meats. They've had a wildly successful IPO. They continue to do well in the marketplace. I I think it's interesting how the media hype and the frenzy fueled and continues to fuel all of the PR around the company for what is essentially a more expensive inferior product to lean ground beef. Also, it's important to remember that in most of these scenarios, any of these burgers will likely be consumed with buns, cheese, condiments, rendering both burgers even less healthy overall. And look, I'm not claiming that lean ground beef is the paragon of nutritional value. Both of these products, whether it's hamburger or a Beyond Meat burger, should probably not be a staple in anyone's diet but rather more like an occasional splurge or a cheat meal. And certainly there's nothing wrong with a a vegan vegetarian diet. And this product is clearly vegan friendly. There are just other more healthy options available to even just pure vegan or vegetarians than this particular product. And finally, I would like to note that Beyond Meat's stated intentions in their corporate charter of lowering greenhouse gas emissions, concern for animal welfare are very noble and, in my opinion, are to be respected as company objectives. I'm not an expert in greenhouse gas emissions, but I am a huge believer in leveraging advanced technology to improve products and services. However, in this particular case, the Beyond Meat Burger substitute product contains a plethora of refined and highly processed ingredients that I'm not convinced really make it a better product. But I am sure, especially with their new funding in recent public markets, Beyond Me will absolutely continue to do research and the work that they continue to undertake will lead to more and better breakthroughs for food technology and overall consumer health. So I look forward to seeing it. With that, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to listen to The Fitterist Show. You can follow us on Instagram at Fitterist Mind Body and on Twitter at Fitterist Mind. 
If you enjoyed this episode, please send it to a friend or subscribe to make sure you don't miss any future episodes of The Fitterest Show. My name is Chris Frown, and make it a magical day.